we talk about how divers can be the profiles working on such a software as uh, Gephi and uh, you are designers, postdoc and uh, PhD uh, designers. I wanted to ask you, what have you done during this uh, week? Who want to show us and explain to us where, on what you were working? You want to go first? All right, we have done two works. So this one is the first one. We decided to present it into a, a observable HQ notebook. Basically, it's a work of uh, um, inquiring how to visualize the fluctuations of nodes uh, among uh, different uh, um, communities that are identified by, you know, the modularity algorithms. So we just, uh, uh, we, we, don't, we don't have a tool to produce uh, the data uh, computationally, programmatically. Yeah. So we started this process with a um, qualitative handmade uh, um, recognition of uh, um, the persistency of clusters among different runs of the algorithm, okay. as you can see from this image. And we did it uh, just by looking at uh, 10 uh, uh, prints, uh, printouts from, from Giphy. And what we have done then, uh, we, we, we created this data set that we could then um, explore visually in different means. So the first thing that we had done was to um, just, you know, cycle around the different modularity classes um, to, you know, make flick, make um, to flicker the nodes that uh, belong to different classes and to keep stable the ones that are in the same one. And, and we did um, many experimentation like those one, like this one, sorry. Um, then we, we tried something more, uh, let's say, visually stable, so not animated. Uh, we wanted to, to print darker the nodes that are fluctuant or stable, so that you can better see at a glance uh, what mm. are the, the, the most stable part of the network, and okay. uh, maybe, as you might see, are the, the ones that are most peripheral. And, and then uh, we did some exploration with um, like color and um, like um, parameters that we could change in color. And in particular, we like two examples. So one is using lightness to yeah. um, point out which are the nodes that are most fluctuant. But of course, we can also tweak it to um, see it. Basically, um, if um, we, we have uh, this, this color outside that tells which is the most occurrent modularity class for a node, okay. But uh, if a node uh, goes towards the, the white, the, the feel of the node goes towards the white, the white, it means that that node is very unstable. So even though we can recognize the most current class, mm. uh, we also recognize the fact that the, unst the instability is very high. And um, another one, well, we, did, we produced many, many of them. And another one is this one in which instead of using the lightness, we just use saturation to basically gray out the nodes that are um, less stable. Um, in, in let's say in conclusion like we, those two are the ones that we mo like the most in fact we put a little flower before mm -hmm. the, the title <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, and uh, the, the the fact is that this would be the one that we would prefer but uh, yeah. uh, to produce the data automatically for this one is just uh, um, not possible at least okay. for now um this one looks a little bit more feasible uh, because we could identify which are the stable nodes among different runs of the algorithm and see for the rest yeah. of the nodes uh, uh, which is the instability um, metric and then map a gray color on top of it and this could be something that could be possible to be implemented yeah okay that's it okay wow Nice, it's really nice. I think it's important to remind that the detection community uh, algorithm isn't deterministic and all the, the problematics uh, you were working on was to transform, to convert this weakness maybe in extra data. And I think it's hyper interesting to see that and the way you can just play with the, the colors, saturation, brightness. How, how hard would you think it would be to turn that into a plugin? Or was it under discussion or? We could talk about transforming into a plugin uh, this example here. And um, so like the, the technical step required, um, I don't know them, I don't know them. Uh, but like, uh, as, as I was saying, like uh, conceptually, we can easily figure out what are the nodes that are all the times in the same uh, mm -hmm. uh, community and uh, classify them in some, um, in some way. And uh, for the other nodes, we can easily figure out how many times they change community and come up with some sort of uh, metric that tells us how unstable they are. And uh, using those two metrics, we can easily map them on top of um, 
um, some visual uh, encoding. But like technically, uh, we are not into Java and NetBeans, so um, yeah. we we guess it probably is possible, but uh, it's not it's not something we can contribute on. Fine. So it's the first step before the Java hard encoding in the in the soft. 